Ozempic Rebound. Exactly what does that mean? Well, we're going to discuss that today because Ozempic is one of the most popular medications currently available for weight loss. It didn't start that way. It was originally FDA approved for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. However, it was found that these patients had a significant amount of weight loss over the course of that first year. They then made Wigovi, which was FDA approved specifically for weight loss. And it was the same medication, semaglutide, except at a higher strength. The use of these medications could give you anywhere between a 13 and 20% reduction in total body mass. However, it had some consequences. There were GI disturbances, pancreatitis, potential renal insufficiency or renal failure from chronic dehydration, a potential for thyroid carcinoma, even though that one's extremely low. Therefore, most people stop taking it after the first two years. And it could be a mixture of everything I just mentioned, plus cost costs approximately $1,000 a month out of pocket. Now there are four major players in this field. We have the semaglutides, which are Ozempic and Wigovi. And then we have the terzepatides, which are Manjaro and Zepbound. All four of these medications work basically the same way. They're GLP-1 agonists. What the heck is that? We see it all the time. Well, I'm going to explain what it is. When you have a normal meal, your intestine releases a peptide. That peptide goes to your major organs and it instructs them to make some changes. It goes to your liver and it tells it, stop converting glycogen to glucose. We have a meal, we're going to have plenty of glucose. It tells your pancreas to release insulin, again, to control your blood sugar after a meal. It tells your kidneys to produce more urine. It tells the stomach and GI tract, slow down a little bit, make them feel full. And it tells your brain, they've had a meal, take away the appetite. And you lose your appetite. When you take any of these medications, you're putting in basically a GLP agonist. In other words, glycogen-like peptide that is acting just like the substance that your intestine creates, but it's artificial. It's telling all those organs to do what I just told you about, except you haven't had any food. It tells your brain, you've had a meal, take away the appetite. You haven't had any food, but you have no appetite. And you start to lose weight quite rapidly because this is really a starvation type diet. We're finding much more malnutrition in people taking Ozempic than in people that are just dieting. So what happens when you stop taking these medications? Well, there were two great articles that just came out. One article took type two diabetic patients. One group received the placebo, the other Ozempic. And over the course of 64 weeks, they followed them. They found that the people who got the placebo who just lost weight by dieting only lost about 3% of the body weight versus the Ozempic group lost about 17%, an average of about 30 pounds. Then they stopped both the placebo and the Ozempic. They found that the people who ate and dieted only regained back about 1%, but the people who were taking the Ozempic gained back just about all of the weight, some even more weight, and very few got stuck at around a 2% loss. So not everybody went all the way back. A few did lose a little bit of weight, maybe 2%. There were other things that would happen when you lose that much weight, good things. Blood pressure decreases. Your diabetes becomes under better control. Your hemoglobin A1C therefore drops. Hemoglobin A1C is a blood test we do to see glycosylated hemoglobin. In other words, hemoglobin that actually has crystals of glucose on it. And it could give us an idea of what someone's blood sugar was for a period of about three months backwards. Okay, I'm a diabetic myself. And when I have to go to my endocrinologist, let me tell you, the day before, oh, I'm perfect. So when he sticks my finger, it's gonna say 112. 
But if he looks at my A1C, he's going to say, hey, doc, you know, you were up to 200 a couple of days there. That's what the A1C does. It'll tell you basically what the diabetic has been doing three months back. Well, the use of Ozempic or any of these medications with that big weight loss makes your A1C better. And it also lowers your C-reactive protein. That's a measure of inflammation. And when you have inflammation, it hurts body parts. If you have inflammation of the coronary arteries, you might get more plaque in there. That plaque increases the inflammation. That inflammation makes it more likely for a clot to develop and giving you a heart attack. So the C-reactive protein going down is really beneficial. Well, the second study jumped on the first study and added to it. It followed the people that were on the Ozempic for over a year, and then they stopped. And they also found out that they did gain just about all of the weight back, some even more. But unfortunately, all of the benefits that I just told you about were lost as well. The blood pressure went back up, the A1C went up, the blood glucose became less controlled, and the C-reactive protein went up too. So that's called Ozempic rebound. When you stop taking the medication, you basically lose all the benefits that you gained. So why would that be? One of the reasons is there's a problem when someone wants to use a miracle drug for weight loss. And these drugs were miracles because this was the first time they were actually really using a physiological agent for weight loss. Most of the other weight loss drugs were somewhere in the amphetamine family speeding up your metabolism, leading to all sorts of coronary events. These were going to be very different. Unfortunately, any significant weight loss has to be coupled with a dietary and a lifestyle change. And they found that most of these patients were not doing that. They weren't learning to eat better, eat quality foods, or portion control. I used to see that in our bariatric surgery patients. The hospital I had privileges in had a huge bariatric program. And we would see these 600 pound individuals come in for gastric bypass surgery. Now to be 600 pounds, you have to be quadrupling your daily caloric intake at, at the very minimum. And when you would interview these patients preoperatively, they would say for breakfast, I have a few eggs, a little toast, and, and maybe some juice. And for lunch, some lean chicken, a little bit of chips for a, a, for a snack, and some soda. And you would find out from the family that breakfast was a dozen eggs, two loaves of bread, and a full carton of juice. And lunch was a full chicken, a huge family-sized bag of potato chips, and a two-liter bottle of Coke. So behavior modification is going to be an important element in maintaining the weight loss and health benefits after you want to stop taking these medications. On a good note, there are some studies out there cutting the dosages in half and finding that the weight loss is a little slower, but it's still there. And the side effects, those nasty ones that I talked about, are significantly reduced. That's going to be something in the future to see if we could lower the doses and see how people do. Until then, if you're on Ozempic, remember, start initiating a diet program and an exercise program. That's going to be your best bet to avoid that Ozempic rebound. I hope you learned something in my video. And like I say at the end of all my videos, if you like it, please give me a thumbs up, hit the bell, hit subscribe, and I'll see you at the future videos.